Angela and I'm Gracie and this is our instructional video on Sutures 101. How do sutures relate to surgical technology and being a surgical technologist? As surgical technologists, this is important to us because we must have the ability to be familiarized with our supplies and their proper usage. Knowledge of sutures is important to anticipate the needs of the surgeon. For example, having the correct suture for the corresponding wound closure would minimize delay. First of all, what are surgical sutures? Sutures, commonly called stitches, are sterile surgical threads that are used to repair cuts. They're also used to close incisions from surgery. Sutures can be classified into two groups, absorbable or non-absorbable. An absorbable suture breaks down in tissue after a period of time. It degrades as the wound or incision heals. Non-absorbable sutures resist the body's attempt to dissolve it. They may be removed by a surgeon after the surface incision has healed. If you look at the outside of this rope, you see how it's braided together? This is an example of a multi-filament suture. Now let me demonstrate a monofilament by removing the other two braids. This is what a monofilament would look like on the outside. It's a single strand. Sutures come in various sizes. The suture size means the diameter of the material. The more zeros in the number, the smaller the size of the strand. As the number of zeros decrease, the size of the strand increases. Tensile strength is an important factor in sutures. It's measured by the force in pounds that the suture strand can withstand before it breaks. The rule of thumb is that the suture strand should be as strong as the tissue it's being used on. When identifying a suture packet, you will find suture size usually located the upper left corner of its packet, followed by its suture length and needle type. Suture name is located in the center and its type of material right below. Always check the expiration date of suture before use. Free tie. These are pre-cut ties that are removed as single strands from the package and placed into the open hand of the surgeon for use as ligatures. Can I have a free tie, please? Thank you. Ligature reel. They are reels that contain a suture wound up. The surgical technologist should prepare the reel by unhooking the end of the suture strand and pulling it two to three inches away from the reel so that the surgeon can grasp the suture without struggling to find the end. Can I have a reel, please? Thank you. Instrument tie or tie on a pass. A suture is loaded onto the tip of an instrument, usually a Kelly clamp, and handed to the surgeon by holding onto the suture end and the instrument until they can have full control of it. Can I have a tie on a passer, please? Thank you. Suture, please. When loading a suture, clamp it about a third of the way down with the tip of the needle holder. Pull from package, and if the suture has a lot of memory, support it from the base and pull at the other end, releasing the memory. and swiftly hand it to the surgeon. Thank you. Cut with a tail. When a surgeon asks you to cut with a tail, always remember that your scissors need to be barely open so you don't cut too much. Go in slowly and cut. Thank you. Cut on the knot. When the surgeon asks you to cut on the knot, it's very important to make sure that your scissors are barely opened. You can use your finger for balance. Come down and feel the knot. Lift up a little bit and cut. Needle back. When you receive the suture back from the surgeon, carefully place it onto the foam 
of your needle holder or place it onto needle magnet if you're in a hurry. If you place it on either one, and the surgeon no longer needs the suture, make sure you cut the thread to avoid it from getting tangled any instruments are catching onto your sleeves or gloves. Lack of expertise would affect the operating room by wasting unnecessary sutures. Handling the incorrect suture may cause tissue damage to the patient. The surgical technologist should always be aware of the factors that directly affect suture choice and technique. Hey, so how was externships? It was okay, I guess, but I kind of messed up in this one procedure yesterday. Why? What happened? Well, I have to admit, I really don't know my sutures very well. What happened was... Hey, Mike, uh, can I get my closing stitch, please? Sure. Here you go. What is this? Um, that's a... It's not what I wanted. What did you want? What layer Are you not you paying want? attention? What do you um, mean? What? I am, but there's so many things on my back table and mayo. Can we get somebody else that can do the job, please? <sighs> do you not know your sutures? I do. Not really. Any advice or tips for me? Yeah, you know, like our teacher always just says, it's just really important to know our sutures. It helps us anticipate the surgeon's needs. And it just makes the surgery go a lot smoother. You're absolutely right. I'm going to do better next procedure. Can I get a suture, please? Sure. Oh, thank you. Ah, perfect. The one I wanted. It's nice when the, the, the tech knows what suture I need. I had an old student here. Didn't know other sutures. It can be irritating. Time consuming. Yeah? Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you. What happened was... I'm <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Do <laughs> you have any advice? Well, you know, it's just really important. Like the teachers always told us, we have to know our sutures. It's also helpful so we can anticipate the needs of the surgeon. And, you know, the surgery just goes a lot smoother. Yeah. <laughs> surgery just ran a lot... <laughs> there, why are you laughing? It was good. It was good. You're laughing at me. I was You're laughing at me. <laughs> I was laughing at me.